All right, we are recording. What episode is this? Episode four of Hackers in Hearthstone. Yep. Um, and today we have Jackie, who will be talking about flow. Hello. And we are doing a tavern brawl for the first time. So this week it's going to be lots of unstable portals. So we're going to have really uh, just unknown cards and hands and everything. And it should be really awesome. So I'm going to challenge Jackie now. This fits really well with my play style, which is only having ever played tavern brawls. Pre-constructed ones even. I don't like deck making. And when it already when the deck's already made for you, and especially when it's largely random, I find the game to be a lot more enjoyable because it's much more reactive. It is. Unless, unless having to plan or think. Also, you can totally blame the game for your RNG. Yeah, I'm not a bad player. It just gave me bad cards. Exactly. Which, speaking of cards, uh, which first stone card would you be if you were any card? I was thinking about this, and I had some trouble, um, but I think I'm going to go with Counterspell. Counterspell. Yeah, I'm, I like to be really prepared for things. Uh, it's all, usually to the point where I'm overthinking, but it, it gives me, it puts me in the position to be prepared for someone else's move. So I, I always have an answer up my sleeve when I'm playing games. Uh, to challenge other people. I think Counterspell kind of fits that. It does. Um, and so on the topic of flow, what is flow? Flow, let's see what this is. That's fun. Flow is, it's a state of mind. Um, and it can kind of be described as a state of mind where you are completely absorbed in one activity. So all of your like thoughts and emotions and focus is all in sync with what you're doing and it really just gives you this feeling of like what you're doing just feels right uh, and it's usually very joyous um, because what you're doing when you're so focused on something um, and you're getting feedback from what you're doing then you just you feel good about like the progress you're making in your competency uh, and you're kind of just all I don't know what's the right word for it extremely engaged and focused on it yeah um, to use a term that most people would probably understand flow is it's like you're feeling in the zone that's, that's probably what most people will recognize can someone experience flow while playing Hearthstone? Um, absolutely. Probably not us, because we're going to be talking about all sorts of other things. But video games are a really good example of something that takes advantage of flow. Because uh, flow is defined strongly by a feedback loop, where you have clear goals for what you want to do, and you have almost immediately f immediate feedback on those goals when you try to take an action to uh, try to, to meet them. So a lot of video games have like this difficulty curve um, where like you'll learn a new mechanic and then do I have anything else here? Hard to talk on my turn. Um, <laughs> Well, you'll learn a new mechanic, and then you'll practice using it, and then the game will get harder and harder, and it'll introduce more challenges and difficulties uh, with that mechanic. And then once you have gotten better with that mechanic, it'll throw a new one at you. And so you're constantly learning new things or new ways to play the game. And as soon as you reach a level of competency before it gets too easy, they'll introduce something else to make it harder again. And so it's always ramping you up as you play the game. And that that sort of loop happens in lots of different activities, so it's not just like games. Um, it can happen in, for almost anything, anything where you're actively doing something. If it's like playing a sport, or like dancing, or even teaching somebody else, um, or like creating art, drawing, painting, writing, uh, and of course programming. So, how exactly does flow apply to programming? 
Huh? Let me take my turn. Yes. Let's do this. Uh, so... One thing that I mentioned, I think I mentioned earlier, is that there's this, this feedback loop in Flow. Um, flow is really defined by uh, three three things. You have that feedback, um, and that you feel like you'll be able to succeed, that you have that potential to improve, that you're not just dead-ended. And um, you're really like engrossed in the experience that you're doing. And with programming, um, there is that feedback loop is really really strong. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you are programming anything, you type something in, you get feedback because you you run your code or you try to compile it, uh, and that feedback is your code doesn't work or your code does work, uh, and both are really good terms of feedback. Um, so there's just a whole lot to learn, which means that you're just continuously improving as you get better, or even when you don't think you are. Like, if you're dead-ended, um, and you don't know what's going on, or, like, let's say you're, you're stuck on a really hard bug, and you've just been bashing your head against it all day. Like, that whole time, you're not going to be hitting a state of flow because you're running into a challenge that's really difficult for you. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not making a lot of progress. But you're still learning things. Uh, and then... Wow, this is really hard to do. <laughs> what was I talking about? You were talking about flow <laughs> and programming and how even when you're bashing your head against the wall, you know, you're still kind of like making progress and learning things. So... Right, so like that, that in itself isn't flow. I kind of really got off of course, but um, there's still that potential, even if you're doing things that you do all the time, you're still going to run into things that you have to look up, and you're still going to be learning things. And so as you solve those problems, I feel that solving the kind of problems that you run into in programming kind of, they have their, that's solving that problem provides its own sort of intrinsic reward, and it makes you feel good about yourself. And when you feel good about yourself, you feel more competent, and then that cycle feeds back into itself, where you do a thing, it works or it doesn't work, you figure out why it doesn't work, or it does work and you feel good about it, and then you rinse and repeat. And when you're working on a problem where your skill level matches the challenge that you have, um, or at least the perceived challenge that you have of your problem, that's when you start to hit a flow state. Uh, things just kind of click, they get going, they, they start rolling. Um, and this is also kind of why you see or you hear a lot of times where like people will just program um, and all day and then they forget to eat. <laughs> and you, all of a sudden you look at the clock and it's now... Um, You look at the clock. It's now like 10, 10 p.m. You have you you skipped lunch. You skipped dinner because you were so engrossed in what you were doing all day, and you kind of had that rhythm, and you didn't want to break it. It even works like you need to go to the bathroom. Like you just you put that off. You even like you don't know why. Like it's not helping you to not pee, but you're like, oh, I just really have to solve this thing. Um, and that's kind of a characteristic of flow. It's this like intense focus on what you're doing. Right. Um, and does that intense focus, like, I don't know, I kind of find that experiencing flow and kind of is what kind of draws me back into working on really difficult problems in programming, just because that feeling you get when you finally get it all working is so amazing that you're like, yeah, I want to keep working on this stuff and I want to keep going with this stuff. Yeah, I think I've always described like, the hardest part, or the mo the least enjoyable part of programming for me, is like setting up a new environment, uh, and that's because I don't have a whole lot of skill or knowledge 
in that area of like dependency hell and like systems and making everything work. And so when I try to tackle that sort of a problem, what is this? Oh, boo. When I try to tackle that sort of a problem, I'm not experiencing flow and it's very unenjoyable for me. Mm -hmm. But then once I have that set up and I can start programming or learning new things, like if it's, even if it's like learning how to use a new library and I'm like reading the documentation and I'm, and I'm trying it out or I'm learning a new language, even if my skill level is relatively low, if I have the right resource or the right challenge ahead of me, um, it feels very rewarding to step through it. So what sort of sparked your initial interest in Flow? Um, I am playing so poorly. I got interested in Flow way back. It was, it was several years ago, back when I was really active in the fire arts community. I would go to these uh, events, these fire retreats, where people would just get together and pool all their knowledge and teach each other and just to hang out uh, in the woods camping. Very, um, very hippie-esque. But in the flow arts uh, community, which is what they call it, they actually call it the flow arts, or um, uh, the concept of flow is really big because uh, prop manipulation, um, which if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, go look up some stuff. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to describe because it's, it's very visual. Uh, it's where you are yeah. spinning tools or or props around you um, in very artistic and geometric patterns. Mm -hmm. um, the one that I have a lot of experience with is poi. Um, but if you just think of like baton twirling, like that's a form of prop manipulation. And when you are cultivating that skill there's a really intense feedback loop in it because uh, you're developing muscle memory and that that takes a lot of focus plus you're you're spinning or moving objects around you uh, really intensely or at, sometimes at really high speeds so the feedback that you get is like it, it hits you in the face um, or you you actually you feel your body moving in a certain way and you can associate that movement with the pattern that you're trying to make uh, when you're performing, uh, a lot of these flow arts uh, people will do with fire, with real fire, and they'll spin that around them. And so when you're out there on the field and you have like fire rushing around you, that is another form of feedback. And I haven't <laughs> yeah, touched to, the board. Yeah, to not, to not burn yourself while you're spinning fire around yourself. What is this? Oh, yeah, that's. Whoops. Didn't even use four of my mana there. I'm sorry. Uh, so. So when you're when you're spinning, uh, which is the term I'm just going to use for this, um, even though it doesn't always involve actual spinning around. Um, you're you're pretty much. Or it's, it's very easy to enter that sort of that state of flow, and so it was. A popular topic to talk about um, and to to recognize like what was going on there and w learning about that there I really didn't think about applying it to other places but I did think about other times in like the past that I had experienced flow like playing DDR mm -hmm. um, where you just feel like you're in a trance uh, and reacting to the game you're not even consciously making decisions like that's a pretty intense form of it right your brain stops seeing the arrows and just starts mm -hmm. like your body's moving and you're just like, I don't understand what's happening, but somehow yeah, but, my body's doing this. Mm -hmm. But flow also, it brings about uh, sometimes an intense joy or feeling of elatedness or happiness from doing the activity that, that you are and being able to recognize that and what is triggering it and what's causing it um, and how to control it. Uh, at least control it to the effect of realizing that's what's going on and not letting it overwhelm you because there can be very negative things that come across or come out of flow um, through ignoring things that you should be paying attention to. Um, What's an example of that? Uh, like not eating, like we were talking about before. 
oh right that's a negative thing yeah yes. I get all my code done ahead of time because i just forgot about everything and just worked on code should have just played that last turn yes I, I saw it after I played the goal. The goal on I was like, Bleh. It's a good thing you did that too. Yeah, prolong the game for <laughs> two more turns. Uh, we'll see. Or one more turn. Actually, you have a really small hand, so. Fingers crossed. I, I have a pretty small hand. I have no cards. <laughs> <laughs> I have your camera up over your hand, which is probably a mistake, but... Yeah, I have zero cards at this point. Um, so I am playing what I draw, so it's all up to RNG Jesus, whatever I end up playing now. Yeah. So, do you think like a Pomodoro technique when you're working on code and stuff is a good preventative to the negative side effects of flow? So you like have that timer sitting there, okay, like 40, what is it, 45 minutes and like 15 or something like that? Hadn't thought about that. I, um, I've never really worked Pomodoro style. So it's something I hadn't thought about. If one th thing, um, I feel like it might be detrimental, but then again, maybe not. I really tell you, or when I say detrimental, I mean like detrimental to the positive effects of flow, like that trance, like that in the groove sort of a feeling. Mm -hmm. Oh no, all my unstable portals. Yeah. <laughs> what will I do without them? Oh. Uh... I don't think I... Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're just gonna... We're just gonna do that. Because um, I'm, like, I'm trying to think of good ways to actually prevent that thing when you're working on code, where you just completely ignore like what your body is doing. And I used to do it to the point where, yeah, it's been like a lot of hours, and suddenly I'm hungry, and then I'm like, my body is weak, and I need to put food in it but I'm just gonna grab like whatever's in my fridge and shove it into my mouth and hope that that's okay. Um, I know some people who have like the jawbone up or something where it's like what every half hour um, that you haven't like gotten up or it hasn't registered you as like getting up and moving around, it will vibrate and buzz to tell you that you need to get up and do things. But I kind of feel like that would border on the side of annoying for me, so it actually would be inclined just to like not wear it and just completely ignore it because I really like trying to focus on my code. And... Oops, I just lost. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, because you have your hero power. E yes. Did you not have a taunt? You still have a taunt up though. Your hero power ignores the taunt. Oh, right. It was your explosive trap that did it. I knew that one of those would probably be an explosive trap, but um, I, mean, I had to kind though? of just attack. I just want to do this for funsies. Get all those cards. <gasps> what? <laughs> oh, gosh, this, this Fell Reaver is really doing a number on my deck. <laughs> with uh, I want to see it. Oh, there's three cards left. I can't do it. With the, with the double play, because each unstable portal spawns a new card, so you're actually burning like six for every one. Yeah. I'll challenge you to a second game. We still have time and we can do that. Um, does this give me my deck? No. Oh, wait, and we're still in a challenge, aren't we? Um, I guess so. I can just choose another, another hero. Yeah. Um, right. Who should I play as now? Hmm. I'll play her. <laughs> you asked for it. Um. Sorry, I'm excited about the starting hand already. 
tossing it all back. <laughs> Why get all unstable portals again? <laughs> don't want you, don't want you. Unstable portals. Um. So, actually, before I play this, uh, so you have some time to actually answer the question and you don't have to do it on your turn. Um, I was, oh god. <laughs> so, I mean, has your understanding of flow changed the way you think about programming when you are programming? Um, I think it has. I hadn't really realized how much it had. Um, but it definitely helps give me, like, confidence, or if not confidence, um, determination uh, when I'm stuck up against the wall and something's really difficult because I know that I've, I've been in that groove before and that, and that being in that, um, having felt flow, I know that I am competent at things. So when you're, when you're doing something new, you're, you don't have a lot of um, skill at it or whatever you're trying to do is out of your element. But realizing that, it's, that that's what it is, that when you're feeling really frustrated or angry or hopeless <laughs> um, at a problem, that's... Mm, yes. When you're in that mood, you can you realize that you're feeling that way because of an imbalance of what the task that you're faced with and your knowledge uh, for combating that task and being able to be like, oh yeah, I've gotten into the state of flow before, um, and that's what really makes me enjoy programming. Helps me be like, uh, why am I? Helps me get over that, like, oh, why am I doing this? Like, I'm never gonna solve this problem. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that. So is is that like a pretty good counter to um, imposter um, syndrome? Do you think? I don't know if it's a it's a hard counter, but it definitely helps if you can use it to put stuff into perspective. Because I mean, I, mean I, I still feel feel that way about a lot of things, you know, like not being super good at stuff. Um, but I think at this point I realize that uh, since there's like the depth of programming and the field and like all the stuff to know, it's it's insurmountable. Like nobody knows it all. And so knowing what you're good at, where your strengths are, and being able to recognize that from when it's from the periods where you have like entered flow and gotten that feedback from it, um, definitely helps. Yeah, I mean, there's not going to be any hard counter to imposter syndrome because it's not really based in any sort of rationality, but it's one of those things that if you can try and keep your mind on it, it could potentially help you, um, I think, just because, you know, it's is another way of like looking at an accomplishment without someone explicitly being there and telling you, okay, look, you're good at this. You can kind of use, okay, I've experienced flow, therefore I can use that to say that I am good at this thing. That's just kind of my thinking, but um, yeah, not really sure. I mean, Im imposter. Uh, syndrome is is a really difficult challenge, but mm -hmm. uh, I mean, a lot of us experience it. I think that's kind of a little comforting in, on its own <laughs> to recognize that so many of us have dealt with that. Um, so I guess my last question is kind of a hard question. And it's if there is there any way for programmers, or do you have any suggestions for programmers for how they can tap into flow, or try and understand what it is and uh, 
get that into um, their thought process when they're working on things. Yeah, that is that is a pretty tough question. Um, and one, one of the things that makes it so tough is that it's going to be different for every person. So there isn't like a formula where I can be like, <clears throat> you got to do this and then that. And then everything's wonderful. Um, but in terms of like trying to recognize flow, um, <clears throat> I don't know. When I am really into something that I'm working on, like I get really high energy. Like I will like do something and I'll be like, yeah, I got that. And then <laughs> next thing. And then you just like feel pumped up about your progress and that you've made. And like I, I start to get like, like a small adrenaline rush uh, from that sort of stuff. And that's like the elatedness that, that flow is associated with. That's what differentiates it from something like hyperfocus, which is usually talked about negatively because you're focusing on one thing to the detriment of all, everything else. And there's like a lot of downsides to it, but flow really makes you feel like happy and wonderful. And, it, and okay, that's like fairyland, but, um, are you, are you saying it's not all fairies and rainbows? I mean, you know, it, that that's like theoretically or you know it's nothing's ever so cut and dry mm. but we wish they were as <laughs> binary thinking programmers um so one thing if you if you don't think if like if you're you know, but that's me. Like I feel that that sense of like excitement, or like, and I I can really tell like when I'm I'm on a roll. Uh, and you've probably been able to be like, you can probably think back to a time when you were like, oh yeah, I was really like in the zone there. I totally knew what I was doing. I was one step ahead of myself the entire day. Uh, and so if you can think back to a time where you were doing anything, where just like time escaped you you were working on something and then all of a sudden you looked at the clock like five minutes later and it was actually an hour later or what you thought was only like 30 minutes was actually all afternoon and all of a sudden it's dark outside um and if you were if it's not like oh i just don't have enough time in the day like i was so busy doing all of these different things if you felt like y you could have just you know like three days could have passed and you wouldn't have noticed like that's probably <laughs> A good chance that you were experiencing flow and if you once you can have something to associate with like how you felt and what triggered it what you were doing uh, you might be able to use that to identify it in the future uh, and if you can identify flow as when you're in it or after it's happened um, and like what was going on you can use that to help structure um, your like future attempts if, like, maybe you were doing really well uh, with Flow because, like, you were doing, like, test-driven development and all of a sudden, like, everything, that your next step was clearly defined for you. Uh, and you could do it, you had the feedback from it, uh, and then just, just do this. And then you distract your opponent with lots of questions while playing yes. them so you can win. Sure. Let's throw you out of here, too. Let's <laughs> get everyone. All the cards. Go. Yeah, this inspire to give my weapon plus one attack is going to really come in handy. Just to <laughs> wait. Uh, if you, can, you can use that to help structure uh, your workflow. Um, or even just to identify like when things weren't working for you. It's like if you try something new. Or if you are feeling particularly frustrated and you can use that to I don't know, it's like a tool that you can use to give yourself feedback. Yeah, I, I think any of those tools are really, really helpful to have. Um, that might have been a mistake. What? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Because there's a limit to how much damage I can take, so that might have been okay. Or it might be a terrible idea. Can't target that either. No, because it's stealth. Because I stealth all of them. Well, let's see what this gets me. <laughs> I 
Well, I can only do one damage at a time, yeah. so. <laughs> that's why, that's why I have that, and then I still see, I was no, getting that was, in, in the that zone. Was nice. That was nice, making it so I can't attack animated armor. <laughs> I love that card, too. Oh. Sorry, this is fun. I, I, um... Alright, after this recording, we're playing again where I can think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you don't get the, the deck from it. So. The pack of cards? I mean, the pack of cards. That. I keep calling packs of cards decks because I'm... A it's almost a deck, person. you know? It's like five cards out of three. I could've... Okay. You know. <laughs> five cards, 30 cards. You know, same thing. Or we could just focus for the last bit of this game. No, my wind fury! Okay, good job. Good job. Aggressively click the board. <laughs> Summon things. Line up, line up the laser. What? Yeah, actually I need to make I'm it shoot you in the face. Actually, no, hang on. This is important. I want to get a recording. No. Did I miss? I don't know. No. There it is. There it is. Rocket's going to launch. This is important. Okay. <laughs> okay. That was, that was worth it. Um, sorry. Ooh. Yes, you and you. And let's do that. And <laughs> you're talking to me, and you're using the the emotes from. Of course. That's that's what's required. Come on, what? <sighs> <laughs> so, I wonder if speaking with you, I'm kind of like destroying the flow you would have normally in playing a game. And so, if you're pairing with someone, you won't ever really enter a flow state if you're working on code with them. Uh, that's not that's not true, actually. Um, there is such a thing as a social flow. Interesting. So when you're working with a group and you have a common set of goals, uh, and again you have that sort of like feedback, you. Oh right. Well, I'll, I'll hold off. I won't end my turn yet. <laughs> All right, battle of RNG. Yeah. When, when you're experiencing, or sorry, when you're in a group, you can still feel that. I've definitely felt that before on like group projects. Um, not like the kind I would get in high school because everybody's like <laughs> fighting over who wants to do what. Um, but like like when we when we did Ludum Dare and we were working together, I mean we weren't like pairing. A lot in Ludum Dare because there was so much to do and uh, we weren't focusing on the same parts of the code base. In fact, we were trying to not work on the same parts of the code base because Unity conflicts are a mess. Yes. Um, but we were working together uh, and like talking over the phone or over VoIP, you know, during that time uh, about stuff and coordinating things. And even though I was like drawing, when you were talking about programming, it was a completely different topic. We still had that rhythm and we held it like all weekend. Like that's. I think like I guess game jams true. are a good example of social flow uh, in programming. Well, it wasn't an extremely exhausting experience at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, we we were able to make something pretty awesome and uh, build together pretty effectively. I think, but I guess similarly. Um, and that might be because we have experience working with each other a bit, too, which that kind helps. of helps. Um, yeah, working, having worked together in the past, we have um, the skill to do that sort of thing, so... Yeah, because uh, I, I feel like uh, ASCII, ASCII Revolution, we, we kind of experienced that, that flow, like we, the entire team, it was you, me, and James, and 
that was the first time for an open source game competition, which was a 24 hour programming competition, making games that we finished like before time was up. And we're like, what do we do now? What do we add? Add more songs. <laughs> yeah. And like that was a, a very unique experience to, to kind of hit that point where we were just like, okay, we're done. This is weird. <laughs> Especially for something that takes place over such a short period of time. <laughs> All right, I have my invincible and my immortal in Uberak. Uh, I might just get this. Oh, damn. Okay. I can do this. I can do this. I can't do this. That's that's not helpful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gave me a Murloc Ranger. So, so you know. So. I, uh, I thought about practicing my Murloc Warble in case I went up against your Paladin, but... I love that paladin. That paladin's the best my Murloc paladin. So good. So I guess I'm dead. Here's Maybe here. not. I don't have much to, like, I'm all fingers crossed hoping for big money no whammies out of these unstable portals. But you could get it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> not really. I have cast a spell. That's pretty good. Kind of? Because you're casting spells every, uh... Yeah, okay. well, you have 10 damage on the board for me. I'm at 11. I can... No, wait, Actually, no. Actually, yeah, you, no, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you have fatal. Because you have the fireball. Yeah. See, you won the second game. Because we... Because I stopped uh, annoying you with questions so that you get into the zone yeah. of focus on what was going on. <laughs> well, and that's it. Uh... So thank you for coming and talking about Flow. Um, I guess if people want to learn more about Flow, where should they go? Just Google it. Um, Wikipedia. You can do that. Uh, there's uh, a, a short but sweet article on Wikipedia about it. Um, there's there's like a definitive book about Flow. Um, I haven't. I don't think I've actually read through it. I did read like a book on flow, or at least a chapter in a book on flow at some point when I was first getting into it, but I forget what that book was from, and I loaned it to a friend of mine, and either he still has it, or he gave it to someone else, but I had never got that book back. Uh, <laughs> this is a, one of those fire retreats, so I mean, I was pretty sure I wasn't going to get it back, and I didn't, I didn't really want it. It's nice to share that stuff with other people, but... um. There is a book called Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Experience, uh, and that book, the, the guy who wrote it, um, who is like the pioneer like, psychologist studying Flow um, in like the 80s, I cannot pronounce their name at all. It's, it's okay. It's, it's really long, and it's not in a dialect that... If you give me yeah. a link to it, I can provide it in the description, uh, the mm -hmm. book and the author's name, as yeah. well as... Um, normally, I ask people if they want to participate to send me a Twitter direct message, um, but I made a form in a Google Forms thing. So if you want to participate, the link will be in the description of this video, and you can just go there, quickly fill it out with, you know what you want to talk about, your email address, and if you've ever played her song before, um, just so I get an idea for, you know, what types of games I can play with all sorts of different people. Um, yeah, and I think that's it for today's episode. Thank you for coming and talking about Flow, Jackie. Yeah, thanks for playing Hearthstone with me. <laughs> and I think we, we had a good exchange here with the, the 1v1. Um, yeah. Awesome. See everyone next time.